The investigation begins after hours. The museum is tense with anticipation. Mona Lisa is leaving her bulletproof cell. She's due for her most thorough health check in 500 years, a process documented in this series of photographs. Under the watchful eyes of curators and scientists, the Mona Lisa moves to a conservation lab beneath the Louvre. During the course of three 36-hour sessions, the painting is weighed, measured, photographed, x-rayed, and scanned. It is the most comprehensive test of an artwork in human history. We were asked uh, to study the painting for one main reason. Uh, the main reason is uh, the stability of the, uh, the panel. The painting is not painted on canvas, but on panel. The concern that Louvre had was the effect of temperatures and humidity and the warping. It's a wood panel, and therefore it's a, it has a lot of distortion associated with it. And by using this technology, we're hoping to be able to record the exact shape so that they can study the physical behavior of the painting. Is the painting deteriorating? Besides assessing the painting's physical condition, the high-tech regimen helped Mona Lisa tell her story. Space Age devices gave voice to the evidence embedded in Leonardo's materials and methods. The data required more than a year to process, but as the results took shape, the team of art historians and curators posed an extraordinary and controversial question. Was the Mona Lisa a portrait of a pregnant woman? One of the tests was a photographic process called infrared reflectography. The science is complex, but it boils down to this. An infrared camera can photograph details we can't see. When the camera peered through the painting's darkened varnish, it detected something unusual about Mona's attire. According to Bruno Motte, one of the curators who organized the testing, the model seemed to be enveloped by a transparent gauze-like veil. I could observe that there was gauze on the left arm, there was also gauze on the right arm, and uh, the, the model seems to be totally enveloped in a transparent gauze. So I deduced that uh, the model was uh, totally enveloped by a, a sort of um, a second dress. The discovery led to new speculation. Some historians believe this second dress may be a guarnello, a garment thought to be worn by pregnant women or new mothers. This painting by Sandro Botticelli, a contemporary of Leonardo, depicts a woman wearing a guarnello. And that woman in the Botticelli painting is pregnant. If Mona Lisa's veil is indeed a guarnello, it suggests that the painting alludes to some aspect of motherhood. Some have even wondered if Mona herself might be pregnant. Leonardo's depiction of Mona Lisa's hands may support this provocative theory. One scholar, a medical doctor, sees her hands as swollen or puffy, a typical sign of pregnancy. Others, however, insist that Lisa's hands are shaped by Renaissance ideals of beauty and nothing more. The Renaissance seems to admire large female hands, and there's a treatise by a guy called Firenzuolo from the middle of the 16th century in which he talks about these large hands and long fingers that were desirable. So large hands was in, and if you look at the hands, for instance, of Leonardo's Cecilia Gallerani, you'll see that they're huge. <laughs> 